What's up guys and welcome to another first look at Planet Coaster Console Edition. In this video, we're gonna be talking about all things related to staff members, but if you guys wanna skip ahead to the next video where we're gonna be talking about paths, go ahead and click on this little doodad thing right over here. Staff members are a crucial part of making sure your theme park is a success. To get to the staff interface here, all you have to do is hit RB on your controller and it'll take you over to it. We have the options of a janitor, a mechanic, a security guard, a vendor, and then all of the rest of these here are what's called entertainers. Their job is essentially to go around specific areas of the park and just try to entertain the guests, try to make the kids happy, try to make the adults laugh a little bit, and of course, just to give the teenagers the selfie opportunity of a lifetime in posing with one of them. The first staff member I wanna talk about is of course the janitor. As you can see here, we have a bunch of vomit everywhere. We have green smog coming out of the bathroom because of how filthy it is, and we have trash quite literally everywhere all over the main paths in this random test park that we started literally just so I could take a good first look at this game. I don't think I ever talked about that, why this series is called First Look. This is, as you can tell from my lack of wardrobe change, the first look that I have taken at Planet Coaster. I don't do any sort of looking ahead to try to figure things out. All the videos you guys have seen thus far have been live for the most part. While they are, of course, pre-recorded, these are quite literally my initial impressions of this game. Now with that out of the way, we're of course gonna need a couple of janitors. So I'm gonna go ahead and place you down right here. We'll place another just in here, and then maybe one clear on this side of the park Maybe another just up here. Now, like I mentioned, it's the janitor's job to go around and clean up all of the messes in the park, but they will, of course, need to take a break every now and again, which is where our staff building we placed down in a previous video comes into play. So if I were to click on the staff room right here, you can see it has two out of three people in it currently. So what I'm gonna do straight away is increase its capacity to 10, which will of course cost us some money, but since this is sandbox mode, it doesn't matter. Next, we can set up the staff room perk. What I like to do is typically the rec room, just because that way the staff members that are resting there will actually gain energy a lot faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, 50 buckaroonies. And there we go, we now have a decent area for our employees to go take a load off and just, and just rest up. But it looks like already that green smog that was in the bathroom is now gone. I think I can hear a janitor in there whistling. Yeah, you can kind of see his outline right here, but he's been in there cleaning her up. It looks a lot better already. Now, if your park also looks like this with just trash and litter everywhere, odds are you don't have enough trash cans. You could have a janitor that's completely maxed out on his skills. There is no way that he's going to be able to go around and clean the entire park and keep litter off of the ground at all times unless you have a trash can for people to throw stuff away in. The next staff member we're gonna talk about is the mechanic. As you guys can probably tell, we have a bunch of broken down rides. Up until now, we haven't had a single staff member, so hopefully we're gonna be able to fix that now. But we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves a mechanic, place him down just over here. Now what's important to remember about the mechanic is that they do enter the rides to repair or inspect them from the exit. They do not go through the queue. So try to make sure that your exits are short-ish, if you can. If you have a ride like Buccaneer's Bounty up here that's just super high off the ground, like look at this exit path. It's massive, enormous staircase all the way down to the main path system. If you can avoid that, do try to do it. But if you can't, you know, you can't, no big deal. Now I'm gonna touch on the mechanic here quite a bit more, but if you guys can notice, these two trash cans we placed down are actually knocked over. That is due to the fact that we have some friggin' rascals in the park right now making a mess. So what I'm gonna do is place down a security guard. Now his job is to go around and make sure he catches every single vandal that he sees, but there's no way that he can do it alone. So it's good to have multiple security officers. If you can't do that, if you can't afford multiple of them, go into the Create tab under Path Extras, and you can find cameras right here. 
What the cameras do is help the security guards figure out where those certain problem areas are, as well as they'll be able to get a better feel for which areas are being vandalized the most, and hopefully they'll be able to catch all those rascally rascals that are going around kicking over our trash cans because they're upset that their favorite ride that they love to throw up on isn't working. So what I'm gonna do is put up a security camera just over here. That way, if these bins are to get knocked over again, hopefully the security guard is able to catch whoever the miscreant is. We can select these trash cans and replace them for $5 a piece, which is a small price to pay. And obviously, vandals can do the same thing to all of your benches. Basically, anything that you put down on the side of the path can be damaged by a vandal. So that's why having security guards is extremely important in your parks, especially if every five minutes you have a bunch of broken half extras that need replacing, you're gonna be spending a lot more money than you would just hiring a security guard. And now moving on to vendors. Of course, when you place down either a blueprint or just a regular shop or facility such as these, they will come pre-staffed with a new vendor, so you don't necessarily need to drop them in, but the option is here if you ever have to. What I like to use this option for of manually placing down a vendor is, say we have these two shops right here. I like to place down an additional vendor to essentially help these two other vendors with their day-to-day -day tasks. That way we can start to get this cycle of, okay, this person's gonna go on break, this person's gonna cover for them, and then so on and so forth. We kinda have a nice rotation of the three of them in these two facilities. Now it's important to keep in mind when you are making a food court or anything of the sort, anything where staff members are, make sure you have a staff room fairly close by. Your vendors, your security guards, your mechanics, your janitors, they're not gonna wanna walk all the way across the park just so that they can rest up. If they do do that, they're gonna be in that resting room for a long, long time. And moving on to entertainers, of course, we do have a couple of different options here. My personal favorite is Captain Lockjaw. I don't really know why. He's just a, a big old dude, and he kind of looks scary slash terrifying, but the guests really seem to like him for whatever reason. But you can see just how much taller he is than regular old guests. Like, the dude's a giant. Oh, and he shoots confetti. That's another cool part about him. So now that we've talked about each staff member and sort of their role in the parks, let's move back into park management and talk about something I didn't touch on in that video specifically. If we go down to our staff overview right here, we can now see all of our staff in the park. So for the vendors, you can assign them a work roster of just that specific shop that they're working at, which is totally fine, but if you have a massive food court with a bunch of different facilities inside of it, I recommend you create your own work roster and then assign those vendors or those janitors or security guards, whatever you have over there, to that roster. That way you know there's always going to be someone there to help things along. I'll talk more about how to create a work roster here in a moment, but as you can tell, we also have their training levels as well as their pay. Now with Planet Zoo, when you would upgrade or train your employees, their pay would actually adjust automatically. A good way to tell if a certain employee is happy with their pay is just to go over to this little speech bubble right here. You probably can't see that underneath my face cam, but you can see their recent thoughts. This is where they'll kind of tell you whether or not their pay is fair, whether or not they think they're being paid too much or not enough, all that good stuff. As you can see, Jamie Dowie right here is content with their job. Everything is all right, they suppose, and they can't complain they've got it pretty good. But it's kind of the meh face. So if you wanted to bump up their pay, they'll be a lot happier. With vendors especially, it's really important to make that they are extremely happy as that directly reflects upon your guests in your park. If you have a vendor that's just like, Wee, I don't like my job, I don't get paid enough, then your guests are gonna be like, dang, this park sucks. They need to pay their employees more. And we got an act of vandalism seen on a security camera just now. So hopefully our solo security guard 
we'll be able to hunt that person down. I'm pretty sure it was this dude right here. Security evaded, I live to steal another day. There's my next pickpocket victim. So this dude sucks. Let's just go ahead and eject him. Instruct a security guard to remove the group. So now wherever our security guard is, he should run all the way over to the opposite side of the park and, uh, and promptly eject. Uh-oh. Oh no, he is going to get on gondola. He is making his getaway. This plan kind of backfired. Also, where did he go? He straight got into the gondola and disappeared. Anyways, we're not gonna worry about that too much. Let's get back on track here. We kind of derailed for him. So to create ourselves our own personal work roster, we just go to overview in our staff and then we can click on work rosters. It'll say you have no work rosters so we can click create new. And now we're gonna be able to select whatever we want to include in this new roster. For starters, I'm just gonna select those two buildings here, the claw machine, the bathroom block, as well as this staff room. Now we can hit RB to confirm. We can also name the roster if we so choose. I'm just gonna call this one roster for the time being. Now you can see our new roster is assigned to zero staff members. So to fix that, we just go back again to our staff. Say we want our entertainer, Captain Lockjaw. Instead of free roaming, we're just gonna change it to the one we created, which is roster. Also, from here, you can create a work roster as well. So now that we have Captain Lockjaw, let's get, let's get two of these janitors. Next, we have four vendors in the park. Currently, our only vendors over here, I wanna say, are Pipshot Water 3 and Pipshot Water 2. So I'm just gonna make both of those people Part of this random roster we just created. And then our mechanic is gonna be free roaming because to be honest, we don't really have a whole lot of rides in this park. It should be fairly easy for him to make his way around this park to get to each ride. But now we're gonna have a much easier time of keeping all of our entertainers, all of our staff members in general, much, much happier with their job here. You can see Captain Lockjaw going into the staff room right there. Another janitor making their way in there so they can rest up. Another great way to check in on your staff members is rather than checking their recent thoughts, you can check in on their workload just over to the right of it. If their workload is low, you shouldn't have to train them. Training them makes them more efficient at their job. If you train them too much and they still have a low workload, they're gonna get fed up over time that they know too much, that they're better than this, to have basically nothing to do all day, which is not at all how the real world is. If you are getting paid a buttload of money to basically sit in a tent all day, not interact with a single person, would you complain? Probably not. <laughs> But that's not how life is for these employees in Planet Coaster. So anyone with a high workload, those are the people that I would train up. So like all of our janitors right here, I mean, you guys saw how much vomit was on the ground. Our mechanic as well, high workload. Whenever that workload becomes medium, you're probably okay as well. Those are the ones that you can maybe keep a close eye on. If, if it ever goes to that high workload, just train them. It's super easy. So the way training works, again, you should adjust their pay. I'm not going to for the sake of this video, but the way training works is as soon as you say, hey, I'm gonna train you, they're supposed to go to a staff building. When they're finished resting, they'll reach that second tier or that third tier, fourth tier, whatever, until finally you can fully max them out on their skills. But to be completely honest, you guys, Apart from that, I'm not really sure what more there is to say about staff. It's fairly straightforward. Each one has a specific job or task that they will complete throughout your park. If your staff members ever become too comfortable and just simply don't want to work anymore, you can, of course, just fire them at any point and hire new ones. But apart from that, I think that about sums it up for staff slash employees. So once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like. Leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.